false captivity first begins in the mind. It's a temporary place, but it can turn into a long term where there's actually true captivity. You know, when people get saved and they come into the kingdom of God, it's just like we've talked about that the tabernacle is three chambers. And in these three chambers, you have the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. And, and in the area where people are saved and they enter in through the outer court chamber where they are washed by the blood, but not realizing that there is more doors. So in one aspect, they're in a false captivity thinking this is it. Never realizing that can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Never realizing that the anointing of Christ to give them the authority to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, move in the gifts of the Spirit. Never realizing these areas of their life. And of course we know that the outer court is the closest thing to outer darkness. That's why many people go in and out, in and out, in and out. Even though some have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and entered all the way to the most holy place to become warriors of the Most High. But the enemy has a way of moving individuals all the way back out to the outer court. Then they go back into outer darkness again. But there are so many things that God has for me and you. And we've got to come out of this state of false captivity. You know, people don't read the word of God and it's easy for them to fall into captivity themselves because it's truth that sets us free without being able to compare what is true and what isn't true. You always end up in captivity. Where there's false captivity, which can be a temporary, it can turn into a long term and can become bondage. Bondage. And Jesus said, I've sent my spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So without allowing the spirit of the Lord to have access into every area of our life, you cannot be free. There will always be an area of captivity. One of the things we want the Holy Spirit to do is have every access to every part of our everyday life, have access to our past, our present, and our future. Every decision. You know, one of the things that the devil doesn't want you to do is know the truth of the word. Amen? And you're not going to know the truth of the word without the spirit of truth. Or else you're going to fall into assumption. He doesn't want us to be filled with the spirit of God. He doesn't want people to know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he certainly doesn't want us to walk in the power and truth and fellowship with the Spirit, with Christ Jesus. In Psalm 126, if you'll turn there, please. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Psalm 126. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it together. Verse 1. When the Lord brought back the what? The captivity of Zion, we were like those who what? Who dream. We we're like those who what? Dream. See, sometimes in the captivity, now they were excited. They were like it was a dream. But when people are in false captivity, it seems like a dream. In this area where you don't even realize that if you've ever had a dream... And a not a very good dream where there seemed like there was captivity and bad things going on and whatever. It was a reality to you. But when you woke up, you were like, whoa, thank God. But that was a false captivity, wasn't it? Because it wasn't real. It was a dream. We call them nightmares. <laughs> Verse 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, 
bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Again, there's an area where this captivity is almost like a dream. It's false captivity. One of the things that's important that we begin to recognize false captivity is an area where it's temporary and it can turn into a long term where it becomes bondage. And Isaiah 5. Is everybody there? In verse 11. Isaiah 5, verse 11. And let's speak it together. Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink, who continue until night till wine inflames them, the harp and the strings, the tambourine and flute, and wine are in their feasts but they do not regard the work of the Lord, nor consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people have gone into what? Captivity, because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, Sheol, or hell, has enlarged itself and opened its mouth beyond measure their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he who is jubilant shall descend into it. Again, go into captivity because lack of knowledge. People go into captivity. First of all, they don't even realize they're in a temporary captive, captivity or what we call a false captivity. Then they go into long term and become bondage. And people die in that state and go to hell. Amen? Again, we must be able to compare. And you and I must be able to compare. It doesn't mean that we're not going to make a mistake. We're knowing that that mistake can bring us into false captivity or temporary captivity. But to be able to discern what is false captivity compared to true captivity. And it's important that we never allow that leading all the way to it becomes bondage. It doesn't mean we won't make a mistake. That's why we repent. Amen? You know, I always look at false captivity in an area where uh, you're gonna, somebody's going to have a baby, right? And you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, it's going to be a girl. <laughs> and they go home and paint the house pink. They buy all kinds of girly clothes. And on the day of the child being birthed, it is a boy. What happened? <laughs> well, it's kind of like a false captivity. You know, people don't realize that even addiction is a false captivity. Because captivity starts in the, the false captivity starts in the mind. Amen? And then it comes down. The reason why addiction what brings the addiction is the curse. Does everybody understand that? The curse brings the addiction. Because it's a curse. It's things that are inherited to us. Diabetes. Brings people into captivity, doesn't it? Because it's associated with a curse that's handed down. Again, when we go to a doctor, what's he looking for? He said, is there any heart disease in your family, any diabetes, any alcohol, any smokers, any of these things? What's he looking for? Something in the blood. That gets in the blood by a curse because God says, because you have forgotten and rejected my knowledge, I will forget your children. So a curse comes on the family line from our forefathers. So again, there are things that we've got to begin to understand. What is false captivity? Where does it begin? 
right in the thoughts. It begins in the mind. So everybody got it. If we allow it to stay there, what happens? It turns into long-term captivity or true captivity and bondage. It's our responsibility to expose these things. In Romans 7, Romans 7 and verse 22. Is everybody there? What does it say? For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my what? My mind, my thoughts. Bringing me into what? Captivity. In other words, the presence of evil is always trying to bring you into captivity, isn't he? And bring, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Of course, he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin or the presence of evil. You know, there are many individuals that are in mental institutions because of false captivity. Labels that have been placed upon them. The greatest label that we're seeing right now all over is bipolar. Of course, we always say bye to polar when anybody comes here. These are false Captivities. False captivity means a label that's been placed by a lie. It's called a stronghold. These are memory lies. Amen? The presence of evil lies. It is lying to me and you. And it utilizes our soulish arena sometimes by emotion or feelings. So someone relies on a feeling that establishes a thought. If they believe it or hold on to it, because even if you believe the lie, you become the lie. I'm going to say that again. If you believe the lie, you become the lie. For as a man thinks, so he is. The Bible tells us that, that Satan is the father of lies. He starts off with false captivity. And then it can turn to true captivity or long-term bondage. Jesus said the truth will set you free. That's practicing the truth. Many people know truth but don't practice it. That's called false captivity. Because if you're not putting it into practice, you can't be free. That takes cooperation, doesn't it? Keeps a person in the outer court, never into the holy of holies or into the holy place. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Is everybody okay? You know, even when somebody has spoken to you about another person, You can hear all of this stuff about another person. And it brings you into a false captivity because you have now copped an attitude or an image of the other person. Until you finally meet the person and know the person and realize you've been lied to. It's called false captivity. Now, if you never found out the truth about this, that false captivity would have turned into long term and become bondage. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal but mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds, memory lies, things that bring us into captivity. Casting down arguments 
and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into what? Captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Right now, let me tell you that evil is oozing out of everywhere. Its purpose is to bring captivity. One of the things it's trying to promote is fear, especially with the economy and everything else. You know, people are beginning to judge themselves and compare themselves according to what the world says. But we're not to do that because it will bring you into captivity. I believe that we're about to have a big pouring out of not only the Holy Spirit, but blessings and financial. I believe that we're coming into an end time move of God that is going to expose more and more evil. I believe that there's going to be more swords released from the spirit realm where it's going to fall into people's hands and they're going to begin to kick butt. We are about to enter a new age. We are about to enter something that is so powerful that we must be ready for. But one of the things we must begin to do is release these false captivities The Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Is everybody okay? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We're to take these false captivity, these memory lies, and bring them into captivity. Hallelujah. You know, Sometimes false captivity is being captive to something you're not, you don't know of or you believe you're free of when you're really not. You know, it's almost like an area where people, a heroin addict, <laughs> a heroin addict is... Uh, Definitely in a false captivity because they give them methadone so they believe that, well, you're no longer using heroin, so you're free. <laughs> that is just plumb dumb. Well, if you're oppressed, well, let's just give you some other medication to remove the oppression. But, of course, the side effects are oppression. Amen. Amen. That's just false captivity, isn't it? And unless you realize these things, you go into learn long-term captivity and bondage. Again, there, he always starts with something of the mind in false captivity. You know, I think one of the other greatest things of false captivity, and I'm sure everybody will agree with it. How many of don't raise your hands. How many of you ask God's forgiveness but didn't believe he didn't forgive you. Well, I just don't feel it. He's the God of truth, not the God of feeling. Our feelings are peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That is one of the greatest captivities in the area of false captivity. I don't feel forgiven. He felt it all for you on the cross. You don't need to. <laughs> How about when you go to a doctor and he gives you the wrong report? Or actually he diagnoses you for something else. He says, oh my gosh, you have cancer. We need to treat you with chemo. Two months later, he found out it was another patient's blood report. That's false captivity. Does everybody understand that? You know, we can get sick and still not be in captivity. There isn't here, no one here that hasn't gotten the flu or the bug or some sort and gotten sick. That doesn't mean you're in captivity. Amen? I mean, you can be sick and still be free because you're still in fellowship with the Spirit 
You're decreeing that by his stripes you're healed. You're decreeing that no weapon formed against you can prosper. You're decreeing the word of God and interceding to bring it forth and birth it. But it doesn't mean that you're in captivity. In fact, sometimes God makes us lie down your still waters. 2 Timothy chapter 2. So the enemy begins with false captivity. It begins with a lie to bring people into bondage. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. Is everybody there? Good. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. Verse 21. Speak it together. Therefore, if anyone what? Cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful, youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. That's why it's important to be in fellowship. Because when you don't know you're in captivity, somebody else can help you. You know, how many of y'all know offense can get you into captivity? Amen. Verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they what? Generate strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them what? Repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So what's the purpose of the devil deceiving you to bring you, start you off with false captivity? Is to come into bondage to serve him. Amen? To serve him. Again, the greatest false captivity is to believe you're not forgiven. False captivity is deception. It's also believing you can't be free. I'm going to say that again. It's also believing you can't be free. Believing that you've done so much stuff in your past that you just can't be free. Hallelujah. <laughs> is everybody okay on that? In Romans 15. <clears throat> this is a reminder tonight. The things that the enemy is trying to do. So we do not fall into those traps, but we should know the devices of and the strategies of Satan's kingdom. We know he can come as an angel of light, can he? Look at the New Age movement. Look at the religions and so forth and how many people are under captivity. And they're good. Some of them are good people. They have a good heart. But they're deceived. Romans 15. And verse 5. Would you read it with me? Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be what? Like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus that you may with one mind and one mouth Glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's he trying to do? Keep us like-minded with the mind of Christ. One of the things that the enemy does is want to bring you, he starts with false captivity. You know, another area of false captivity. Um, 
and this is just an example. Did, did you ever have your keys, right? And you opened the door and you went into your car and you stuck the key in the ignition and it didn't budge. And you realized it wasn't your car. I mean, it was identical on the outside, man. It's like, whoa, get out of the car quick, dude. <laughs> Pastor arrested for trying to steal a car. Hello. That's kind of like that false captivity. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I didn't recognize that it, I mean, it was identical to the car, although it didn't have that Christian insignia on it or something to that degree. There was something that just didn't allow us to see it all the way through. But it had a look-alike. See, that's called false captivity. It always has a look-alike. It has that form of godliness, but it's just, not true. Amen? <laughs> and one of the things the enemy doesn't want you to do is be like-minded with Christ. Like-minded, one mind, one mouth. One mind, one mouth. In 2 Corinthians 3. In verse 14. It says, But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart or on their mind or... or prevents them from an area of understanding. Nevertheless, when one does what? Turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. When one turns to the Lord, now he tells us who the Lord is. Verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or what? Freedom. One of the things that Jesus did is he came to turn us and left us the Spirit, his Spirit. Amen? Because he left us the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth carried by the Holy Spirit. And when one turns to him, the scales are removed. In verse 18, it says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So one of the things the enemy doesn't want you to do is constantly be transformed into the image and likeness of Christ. He wants to oppress Christ instead of allowing his character to be expressed. And he starts this with false captivity of the mind in every area. It's, listen, this is where people begin to, uh, begin to compromise. Compromise is always the beginning of false captivity. Compromise, laziness, justify. When you find yourself justifying what you're doing, when you know it's not right in the eyes of God, you are in captivity. Has so everybody got it? You're in captivity. You have an, uh, you have, it's temporary captivity. You have an opportunity to get out of it. If you choose to stay in it, you will fall, go all the way to bondage. Ephesians 4. Oh, 
We're seeing many things be exposed, not only in this country, but globally. Things that are in our government and all, all, all areas where the enemy is using to bring people into captivity. Ephesians 4. Verse uh, 20. Is everybody there? Ephesians 4, verse 20. It says, But you have not so learned Christ. Christ here meaning the anointing. You have not so learned the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth. You have not so acknowledged it. You haven't grabbed hold of the presence of God. You haven't acknowledged it. The anointing. The Christ. The anointed one is anointing. You have not so learned Christ if you had heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So he was talking about the anointing in Jesus, right? That you put off concerning your what? Your what? Former conduct. Come on, read it with me. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful what? Lust. And be renewed in the what? Spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man which was created according to God. And true righteousness and holiness. Now listen. Now he's going to tell you the things that can bring you into captivity. The first thing he says. Therefore put away what? Lying. Put away what? Lying. Let each of you speak truth to his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. And do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give what? Place to the devil. Nor give place to the devil. So when we begin to compromise, when we become lazy, we begin to justify, it brings us to a false captivity, which is giving place to the devil. The quicker you acknowledge it and remove it, the quicker you kick him out. Amen? If you allow him to stay there, play there, you'll be the toy he plays with. And eventually, he'll take your mind over. He'll take your will over. He'll take your life over. And you'll come in bondage. And you will serve darkness instead of light. You know, in that video we saw, here's a man that gets free, doesn't he? Jesus frees him, and he says, oh, come on, there's more. Come on, there's more. Get out of the cage. The door is open. I unlocked it. But because of the captivity still, doesn't realize that there's more. You know, think about how many believers don't realize there's more. Oh, salvation is everything. Hey, man, let me tell you, without salvation, there is no beginning. But salvation is not the end. It is the beginning. Listen, we don't all get freed in salvation, do we? But access to complete freedom is through salvation. Then we access everything else. It's like the first door. That's why it takes cooperation. That's why it takes submission. That's why the word says, submit to God, resist the devil. Without submitting to God, you cannot resist the devil. It's impossible. In Colossians chapter 2. Hallelujah, I just heard the Spirit say, how come he's not talking about, somebody's thinking, how come he's not talking about fear? <laughs> I will. Colossians chapter 2. In verse 18 and 19. Is everybody there? Let what? No one cheat you of your reward. 
taking delight in what? False humility. How many have ever seen false humility? Oh, man. Yeah. A lot of religions carry a false humi humility. False humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. In this we see many individuals with a false humility, many religions proclaiming to have a form of godliness but denying the power. Some of them have a false you know, even in their dress and so forth, they dress it like godliness. They're, they believe that this is a godly dress. Thank God he doesn't judge by the dress. He judges by the heart, doesn't he? That's why the word says that there are many wolves with what? Sheep clothing. Amen. False humility, false religion with false characters. Believing there's something when they're not. In Romans 8. Some of the most wicked individuals carry a false humility. Remember, the devil comes as an angel of light. But you'll know them by their fruit. In Romans 8 and verse 15, would you read it with me? Well, let's start at 14. For as many as are what? Led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption to whom we cry out, what? Abba, Father. Now, I want to go back here for a second. He said you did not receive the spirit of what? He acknowledged the spirit of bondage, didn't he? Amen? The spirit of bondage. You did not receive the spirit of bondage to what? Fear again. In other words, that person has been set free from the spirit of fear. Now the spirit of bondage is what? Bringing him back to fear. The word says we don't fight flesh and blood, but powers of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places, right? Principalities. Your fight and my fight is the unseen realm, not the seen realm. And until that becomes a reality, people stay in bondage. Spirit of bondage. It, 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 in, in this case, it is the spirit of bondage that is the true captivity. Does everybody see this? It is the spirit of bondage that is the true captivity. You know, people come across in that area, in that false captivity, the I can't syndrome. When the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen? And that's what should be the response when the enemy tries to bring you into the captivity. The first thing he tells you, you can't. You can't. Or he tries to bring you into captivity to tell you you should when you shouldn't. <laughs> and Isaiah 26. This is where we've got to go deeper. Stop looking at the temporary. Never judge by gifts of the Spirit. Never judge by knowledge of the Word. You judge by the fruit. Amen? Because even the devil knows the Bible. Isaiah 26 
and verse 3. I guess I better get there. Let's speak it together. You will keep him in what? Perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Let me share something with you. When you begin to lose sight of the Lord, Remember, David said something powerful. He said, I always see the Lord before me. When you begin to lose sight of the Lord, you're beginning to fall into captivity. Has everybody got it? The moment you lose, you're losing sight. So you're doing something. You're busy, but you're not acknowledging the Lord. You're losing communion with him. No matter what you're doing. Even when I play tennis, I welcome the Holy Spirit. I can't blame his bad playing on me. I mean, I can't blame. <laughs> That's called false captivity, isn't it? <laughs> no, I can't blame my bad playing on him, right? <laughs> but in everything we do, we're to acknowledge him in all areas. Although we do have a discussion on the days I play bad. <laughs> but perfect peace is one who sets his mind on the Lord. So no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, if, you're, if he's always before you, that's relationship. If they're not awakening in the morning, and good morning, hey, man, how you doing? Praise God, Lord, Holy Spirit. Good morning. See, we're to acknowledge the other side first. If you acknowledge this side first, something ain't right. Because your lifeline is not on this side, it's on that side. Amen? Good morning. I don't care if the baby wakes you up. Oh, morning, Lord. I don't care if the phone wakes you up. Oh, God. Morning, Lord. <laughs> See, what you're doing is you're making contact. Got to always make contact with the other side, no matter what's going on. Oh, man. You know, it's amazing how the atheists make contact with the other side. As soon as something happens bad in their life, they go, oh, God. <laughs> you know, when they, when they heard the police coming, oh, God. God. <laughs> When somebody, oh, God, well, you're making contact with the other side because you know nothing can help you on this side. <laughs> Glory to God. So perfect peace comes by keeping our minds set on the Lord. What the thing the enemy wants you to do is to divide your like-mindedness with him. You know, one of the things he wants to always tell you is you're unworthy. You're bad. You're bad. You how can you call yourself a Christian when you do all those things? Well, if it's under the blood, there's no guilt. There's no condemnation. The enemy wants to bring, he wants to tell you that the blood of Christ is a lie. That it has no power or effect. He wants you to come in agreement with that. But that's a lie. Amen? In 1 Peter chapter 4. In verse 1, <clears throat> Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. 
For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. We walked in what? Lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. So now that you've come out from among them, one of the things that the enemy's going to try to do is convince you you've lost your friends. Oh, what was me? We don't have friends. In the body of Christ, we have brothers and sisters. Jesus called Judas friend. Hello. Everybody okay? <laughs> Arm yourselves with the same mind. Arm yourselves with the same mind. In uh, verse 5 it says, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. In other words, self-examine. Self-examine. In 1 Peter chapter 1. In verse 3. Again, one of the things that the enemy loves to do is he loves to get us into a place where we're going after what we believe is keeping us in captivity. Come on, hear this. He loves to get, try to get this to... Remember, he's a liar, right? So, you may be struggling with something, and he's trying to get you to believe that your captivity is something else than what it truly is. Has so everybody got this? That's called false captivity. Because you're going after something that is a lie. You know, we bind the blind, mute, and deaf, the Jezebel spirit and so forth, but the spirit that was actually utilizing the Jezebel spirit is controlling spirit. Amen? And there's more to it than that, but I'm not going to get into all that tonight. But one of the things the enemy likes to do is to distract us. So we go after the wrong thing, and we stay in captivity instead of removing the actually true thing that's keeping us in captivity. Amen? In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by what? Various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And I'm going to close at Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 10. False captivity. It's temporary. 
Don't let it turn into long-term and bondage. Let's speak it. Revelation 12.10 Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the what? Accuser. How many anybody ever been accused? Doesn't the enemy accuse you daily? <laughs> yeah. What's he trying to do? Get you into what? Captivity. Because if you agree with the accusing, you go into captivity. It first starts with a false captivity, which is temporary in the mind, and eventually goes into long term. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's why it's important to speak the word. You overcome with the word. And they did not love their lives to what? To death. To death. False captivity. It's a temporary. It turns into a long term and bondage. Don't let it happen. And when you fall into it, repent, get out of it, and remove that spirit. Now, there's other teachings that can come along with this. And there's a teaching called stop justifying and start recognizing. There's another one called reality of captivity. And there's another one of called freeing the mind. And these are all available on the uh, eternallibrary.org. Amen? So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask this seed be protected by the blood of the Lamb and grow and bear fruit for your glory. Lord, we repent for any area where we've come in agreement with the voice of the stranger that has brought us into false captivity. You know, you see, and you're faithful. And we take dominion right now as we repent. We apply the blood of Jesus to this area and we command every associated spirit that has brought us into any captivity whatsoever to loose us and to leave us and go to the pit in the name of Jesus. And we welcome the Holy Spirit to come and take your rightful place in these places where we've been ca taken captive because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now may the blessing of the Lord be upon you May the Lord go before you, snare your enemies in their own nets, and grant you the wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the throne room of God that you may be about his business in truth, spirit, and power. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed. Now I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers. And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at the eternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus.